So first we're starting on the outside. And we have the garden here. I guess you could see the fenced in area that once was, it's now completely gone, but I'm sure they had their own little garden here. It's all overgrown now. Yeah, we got this small little one story home. I believe it has like five bedrooms, maybe like three and a half baths. Mid-century home. And the owner left his car here. Got like a Toyota Corolla, like a 1996 or something. Still left here. Here we are entering the garden here. <laughs> Got some uh, Halloween decorations still up. Got this ghoul. Hopefully there's no ghosts in the house. What's up guys? Welcome back to another exploration video. Today, we're back at another house. I love houses. This is a dream location of mine. Everything's left behind. It has an amazing backstory and the stuff inside the house is ridiculous. I've already filmed. I'm doing my outro or my intro now. Basically the story of this house is a man was born in the UK in the 1940s. He eventually moved to America and he was a higher up in a huge company. He was actually the higher up in a translation company. In many different times throughout his career, he actually worked side by side with Barack Obama. We're gonna be looking at personal letters and actual Christmas cards from the Obama family sent directly to, to um, the former owner of the home, even with his name on it and everything. Um, it's an amazing location. I think the guy, he fell into really bad illness. He eventually either passed away or moved, but all I know is everything, absolutely everything's left behind. We have guns inside the house that we found. I just can't, I can't explain it. You guys are gonna enjoy this one. Leave a thumbs up if you do, and let's go check it out. So right now we're in his uh, driveway. You can see these old uh, mid-century lamps, and he had his own little roundabout here. Yeah, so this is his front porch. Got some nice lion busts waiting at waiting for us, waiting for their owner to return, but sadly he has passed away. Also have a cheetah bust as well. Still got some old bicycles still here tires away off the frame. They're pretty nice ones though. Oh wow, look at that. Right away, there's a gun safe here. Look at this old gun safe, Heritage Safe Company. Some real deal stuff. Got designs of the uh, the bucks down low. Probably a hunting, hunting uh, rifles as well as a uh, home defense, but nothing here now. I guess family took the stuff left, or maybe some vandals did. Who knows? Right away, we're in the uh, living room here. Joined today by Steve Ronan. Shout out to him, showing us the house today. You guys gonna like it a lot. It's a good house, it has a lot left behind. Oh, it's not only that, wait till you see, like what you find in that room over there. The office? Yeah. Okay. Okay, we'll have to see. First, we're in the um, weird setup in here. We have some beds on the floor, and this is the living room setup. <laughs> Abandoned in 2019, it was an elderly guy who lived here, so it did, it's, you know, he never updated his television. He still have a sharp TV. Check out this old Sony camera. Dual media camera, camcorder, and photographs. 1.2 megapixels. FD Mavica. Oh, it even has a digital screen in the back, so it's not too, too old. Cool little find, though. So 
So this person who lived here was very sick towards the end. They have all their clothes in the living room just stacked up. It's possible they were probably living in here towards the last stages of their life. Got some stuffed animals, regular bear and a polar bear. So Steve told us that the office is probably one of the best rooms here. There's some memorabilia with different celebrities of different sorts. So before we head in there, we'll probably save that for last. We're going to head over to the bedrooms down the hall. Looks like there's quite a bit of stuff left. So got the dresser right here. Even have some bullets. Got some rounds left on the dresser here. BBs, copperheads, it's for air guns. So this guy definitely loved weapons. Wow. His keys, his car keys. Wow. Got the painting of the dash under here. Like first day of school vibes. It's funny. Just a closet of stuff. Huh. Clothes, everything. Love abandoned houses. Let's see what's in here. Little basement. Look at the designs on here. Pretty fancy, pretty fancy craftsmanship here. Ooh. Walk in bathroom. A lot of mirrors in here. Oh wow, all the sheets and towels still left behind here. What else is here? Shower. Damn, still got soap right next to the sink. And a bunch of magazines, I guess reading materials. Ooh, this bedroom's trash. Take a quick peek inside, but just storage. Nothing to see in here. This place has everything left behind, though. You gotta love abandoned houses that are left like this. Oh, here we go. Oh, wow, okay. So we got a walker here, some exercise material, but check out this old phone. Not that old. A nice cool one. Found another camcorder here. This one's a Yashica video camera recorder. This one takes video cassettes. Wonder if there's some home movies inside this house that were filmed on this. Oh wow, okay, this place is kind of a mess. It's got some nice things, but a lot of junk as well. Like, look at this chair over here. That's a pretty nice grand chair. And this is a epic walk-in bathroom for the master bedroom. It's pretty insane. It's like bigger than my room. <laughs> pretty cool stuff. Look at all the shampoo and stuff still here. Like, this is a real abandoned time capsule. All the shampoo. Still here, man. Toothbrush, let's see if it's still charged. Mm, how do we turn it on? Set it's on, it needs to be charged though. Let's take a look behind. The mirror, just pills on pills, man. It's kind of sad, I mean, most abandoned houses, they have this fate. Everything left, nobody shows up, and everything gets left behind. Look at that, absolutely stacked. Oh my god, I didn't even notice this walk-in closet. Oh my god, the amount of shoes I'm looking at is crazy. Oh, everything, everything in here. All the shoes, sandals, boots. All oh, the briefcases. 
Oh my goodness. Wow, you could literally fill a whole department store up with all the clothes in here. Got all the ties hanging up. So this guy did work with Barack Obama sometime in his life. He worked for the government. And um, yeah, he has a lot of suits, a lot of ties and such, a lot of luggage. Beautiful home here. Yeah, so other than the bathroom and walk-in closet, the rest of this bedroom is an absolute mess. Everything's gone. Like, the bed is in the living room, so that's probably where he, sp he spent most of his time at the end of his life. Got some more things to look at here, though, like this old sound system, stereo home music. These things are so colossal, it's so crazy. Oh, look at this hatchet. It was never used, it was $4.99. All right, let's open up this brand new hatchet without cutting myself. Pretty nice. This place had so many fake parrots in here. I just don't get why they just didn't have real ones at that point. Oh, this is to the attic. I didn't even see this. I gotta move this bed out of the way. Oh, okay. Not that much left behind, actually. Just some holiday stuff, typically in people's attics. Sketchy. So there was nothing in the attic, but it doesn't hurt to try and look. head into the kitchen now. I was about to head into the office, but I just realized we forgot the kitchen. We can't forget the kitchen. Look at this. There's like a noise in here. Oh, look at that. The power still works. Oh, it smells so bad over here. I'm, li I'm on the verge of vomiting, like gagging. It smells so bad. It's probably, it's probably coming from the fridge. I can't even breathe really over here, it's... Oh, fuck. I'm not playing. It smells really bad, my eyes are tearing. There's like... Cans of like mushrooms and stuff on top of the fridge. It's probably really expired. And there's stuff in the fridge, I can't imagine what it looks like. Still got dishes in the sink. We got all the parrots. And the lights. Hey, let's plug these lights in. Does it not work? I guess they burned out. That stinks. Let's see if the lights work in here though. Nope. Those don't work either. Kind of cool lights. Still got cans of tuna left behind. All this different canned stuff. Got some spices. Got some beans. Mushrooms. Tomatoes. Well, there is power in the home. You can make popcorn if you want. You can turn on the stove. I'm curious if the refrigerator is running though. Actually, this thing has an ice machine. Let's see if it has ice. It's running. It runs. Let's see if it has. Let's see if it has anything. Oh, that's empty. Oh, poof. Okay, other side. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
every time I'm exploring a place, it feels like I'm kind of exploring the end of the world. And moments like this really make me think that just because if this was like an end of the world situation, like this is all food that somebody would be eating. Oh, look at all the water here too. Like if this was really an apocalyptic situation, I would be set. Yeah, look at all these gallons of water here. Just lined up. They're all like half filled. So I'm not sure what that's about. But you could see the pill station for this person here. Just stacked. Even more. Empty. Okay, these are empties. More. Let's have some pills in it. All these are kind of filled still. So. It's like they had their own pharmacy here. That's how many pills I'm looking at. Really sad to see. Old wooden pipe. Then we have the dining room table. Nothing special, but I do like these uh, little mid-century seating arrangements here retro i do like it and look at this this is the noise i've been hearing the whole time i've been in the kitchen <laughs> that's so funny they're still moving i guess they're just not gonna stop ever <laughs> Old Samsung television as well. We got another bedroom over here. This one's pretty destroyed as well. Another bathroom. And some old computer stuff here. So he had a e-machine monitor. And he had a Canon printer and a Cisnet computer. Interesting. Yeah, the rest of the stuff in here is just like random junk. I just don't get what all this stuff is just so spread out for. And got a bunch of vacuums. I've seen like over 10 to 15 vacuums already. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Who needs that many vacuums? All right, guys. Time for the room that Josh explored already. Steve explored. They said that there's some really cool stuff in here, so I saved it for last. Yeah, big office, nice cozy room, a lot of natural light. We got some cool stuff in here. You have your own mini bar right there. You have this boxing setup. And I just noticed this is from the 1984 Olympic Games. Cool stuff. Oh, there's also medals here, too. Oh, sh**. You have two Olympic medals here, or maybe just replicas. Got bronze, silver, no gold. I guess that's why this guy was still practicing his, uh, his one, two. Trying to get that gold. But cool stuff, man. I always wanted a okay. boxing, uh, okay, so it's boxing, what is this called? Boxing bag, punch bag. So this is where the cool stuff comes in. We have pictures of this guy. This is the guy who used to live here. And this is him shaking Muhammad Ali's hand. So crazy. Guy in this house, he had ties. Met Muhammad Ali. That's a pretty big uh, accomplishment if you ask me. One of the greatest to ever do it. And this is the other thing in the house, which is crazy. I can't believe I'm holding this in my hand right now. This is a family Christmas card from the Obamas. From our family to yours. Pretty young. Maybe early presidency. No gray hair for Mr. Obama there, Mr. President. May the holiday season and the coming year be filled with joy for you and your family. Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, Malia, Sasha, and Bo. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Paid for by Obama for America. What a, what a find. Like, Unbelievable fine. I just don't really have words for that. To find anything associated with a current or former president is rare. And yet, 
this card is sitting here inside of this uh, abandoned house. And his desk over here is just filled with just different photographs. All these are labeled 1990s. And um, you got just various pictures. Looks like he's in like Germany here or something. Traveler though, for sure. Here he, here he is again. Somewhere beautiful. I wish it said where this was, but obviously Europe. We even have film strips here. Let's see what's on these. Yeah, so these are just the film reels of the pictures we just looked at. Could see you could recognize one of them. I could recognize this one right here, second from the left. Same picture as this one right here. And then we have his desk here. Got some rounds on the table. You have more, what is this? 12 gauge shotgun. So I guess that explains uh, the gun safe. I guess he had a shotgun. And I think this is like handgun ammo. I can't really tell. But crazy stuff. So I just found a printout that the owner of the house printed out. It's like a blog post. It's something about, it's a corporate internet explorer post. It's a, but it's basically like a self-biography. It says, I came to the USA in 1979 when I departed from my group in England. I asked for political asylum. As a young MD with dollars in my pocket and speak no English, my girlfriend, a famous Czech movie star, came to the USA to start a new life, which was both difficult for us. 25 years ago, I joined and never quit. And in this, he actually speaks about when he shook Muhammad Ali's hand. Years ago, during a Los Angeles, California marathon, I shook hands with Muhammad and asked him to give me one piece of advice. His piece of advice was, whatever you do, man, never quit and never let anybody beat you up. Next page. And that was easy for Muhammad to say. I was beaten up many times, but always shook like a little puppy again. Wow. And there's more, it goes on and on, but it gets a little personal. Um, and here's that picture again of him and Muhammad. This uh, printout was 09, so this is like a blog post or something. Later on in this blog post, he talks about his health. And this was 2009, so only 10 years later, he eventually passed away. He said that my health last year slowed me down tremendously. I am a, it cuts off. My heart is severely damaged from the injury to my back. Severe pain has prevented me from regular work. But as Muhammad told me years ago, never quit and fight till the end. So I'm fighting and sometimes it looks like I lost the battle, but next day the sun is shining again and a new victory is on the horizon. Pretty emotional stuff. This is actually giving me the chills right now just because I'm standing inside of his office. Um, and I'm kind of like reading his life and getting a better feel of who he was while simultaneously looking at his travel briefcase still filled with stuff. Take a look at this. Like you have the old phone right here and his old, his old briefcase. Got a picture in here. Can't take it out. I can't tell if that's him or not. I don't know. What are these blank checks? I just can't believe his work suitcase is still here. Like, he did one last trip, opened it up, didn't even take anything out of it. And it's not like Explorers did this, because this was probably closed, and it has locks on both sides. So this was just propped up as is. This house is one of the biggest examples of just trapped-in-time abandonment that I've seen in quite a bit. Learning stories and just learning about past experiences and people from the past is basically why I started my channel doing this. Architecture and abandoned places, that's one thing, but the stories are just, is what lightens up the place because if it wasn't for the story, this would just be an abandoned house. But after investigating and looking around the house, finding these clues and like, it, it's so crazy that he printed all this stuff out and just has it on the desk. Like he wrote this article himself and he kept it in his own house, but he wanted other people to see it online. It's just crazy that years later, I come in with no idea whatsoever what happened, and now the picture is being painted. Um, we're gonna keep looking around this room. It has a lot more other knickknacks here that are pretty cool. Yeah, over here we have like a display shelf. Oh, that one collapsed, it's sad. You could see it was like that. We got some broken glass and pottery. But we do have some like 
model pirate ships. Perhaps he made them himself. If so, kudos to him. That's really impressive. <laughs> you have like a snake, a brass snake. What is this? This is an award. 2009 Best of the Best, Best Progression Award. It's written in Chinese or some sort of Asian characters. So yeah, this guy was a world traveler. He really went all over. And, um, you know, his house is what it is today. Mm. Kind of a creepy looking elephant. Look at the eyes. Why is he looking like that? He has more awards from the hospital he was working at. Top leader for doctor, blank, blank, April 25th, 2009. I mean, this guy was a very notorious man here. Oh, a photo album. Oh, this is house. This is amazing. This is all of his house. So he had three cars at one point. I could see all that. Yeah, look, there's the um like the mid-century lights outside. Oh look, there was like a storm or something. He's like documenting all that. That's his front deck. Look at it. Let's I, I need to find a picture and then match it up with what it looks today. I wonder if there's any pictures of the inside of the home. Oh look, this is him building the house or redoing it. These are all construction photos. Oh look. Before our backyard before. Whoa, what happened? I wonder if there's a hurricane or something. This is so interesting to look through. Oh wow, that's it. Okay, well I need to find one picture at least to match up with current times. So there you can see the house. We got the sun crazily shining at me, but it's the same place. Only thing that's missing is the three cars and the people inside. It's such an amazing find. I love finding these things. So Steve was looking through the desk and look what he found. Yeah, it's, a, it's another letter from the Obama family. To Ivan, I truly appreciate the dedication and support you have provided me during my first term. Wait, check the back. Michelle Obama. It's definitely official. It is official. There's no way of faking that. It's a real deal. Does it say when it was um like stamped maybe yes. on top? No, USA. Yeah, no, it doesn't. I thought I saw a year somewhere. It's got to be after his first. Oh, right down there, 2012. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, 2012. There you go. Yeah. So this letter was sent to him right after Obama's first term, right before he tried uh, well, right right when he did do his re-election. Really interesting. Okay, let's see what's behind this bar. We have another Dashend. This is a really ugly <laughs> uh, little tapestry here. But we have some uh, technology. Got some more cassette players and a fax machine. Speakers, CDs, just your average office here. And got plenty of cassettes. So after doing some more digging around, we're currently still inside the office. We've been in here for nearly an hour. We actually found a huge archive of files, emails from like 2009 era. My story that we were originally thinking of what happened here was close. We're getting a better idea. So this guy was a higher up, the guy who lived here, he was a higher up in a company that was basically a translation company for English. He also translated Russian, Latvian, German, Spanish, and other languages. We're thinking that he had some sort of affiliation with Obama, the White House, the presidency team. And the one thing that's extremely interesting and why I wanted to bring this up is that the emails we did find basically explains the downfall of the company. Um, these are all workers' emails sent to him about other employees talking about how they haven't had their money given to them, that they wish they worked at Walmart, and that like just they just don't want to work at this company anymore. So I think towards the end, the guy who lived here, his health went down, the money wasn't there because the company was failing, and he moved. We were seeing some other stuff th saying that employees were suggesting that he moved to Florida, 
because the weather wasn't good for his back, which he had injuries from, which explains the medication. We're just getting a bigger and better picture of um, everything that happened here. It really paints the picture of his home completely now that we know most of the story. Okay, so we just found something that I basically never found before. We were doing a little more snooping and we saw something under the couch. That's when we moved it and we found something pretty insane. Two things that are pretty insane. Um, I'm wearing the gloves, so I'm the one who took them and put them over here for now, just for viewing pleasure. But uh, yeah, we got some shotgun. We got a shotgun and a rifle. So this explains the, uh, the 12 gauge slugs we saw. I mean, beautiful shotguns. It also explains the gun case. I just don't get why they were under the couch. The only thing that was sticking out was the stock, and I just noticed it and pulled it out. And that's when I found the other one right next to it. So I don't know if somebody came here before and hid them, or maybe they were just hidden for self-defense reasons, but they're here. Pretty insane. I mean, beautiful guns. I think this one is a 22, and then that one is a, obviously a shotgun. The only thing we didn't explore is the basement. Josh is already down here. Propane. Just stacked. Not anything specific down here that points out to me, but just like random around the house, tools and appliances. You have a coal furnace here in the basement. That's pretty cool. So we have even more storage over here. I don't know, this looks like just some sort of a cleaning liquid. Oh, pool fuel reformulator. I don't know, just a bunch of, oh, look at this old camcorder in here. I might have to bring this upstairs and check this out. This is huge. So I took this out of the basement because it was really the only cool thing in there. The box is really moldy. But yeah, we got a Canon VME2 camcorder. Look at that. Takes video cassettes. Love it. All right, everybody, that's gonna do it for today's house explore. I had an absolutely amazing day. This is the absolute example of an abandoned time capsule home that I strive to look for when it comes to abandoned houses. Just finding a location that's completely untouched by time, everything left behind. And not only that, it tells a story, an amazing one at that. This was a man who was a head CEO type position of a global company, one of which he met Muhammad Ali, shook hands with Muhammad Ali. He was getting personal Christmas letters and other letters from Barack Obama. This guy was a huge deal and it's just sad that his home is abandoned. I am just glad I was able to come through here, experience this place for myself, learn a little bit today, and just enjoy what is here. Exploring is a reminder that nothing is permanent and everything is, uh, you know, nothing comes with you in the next life. This place is the example. I really enjoyed everything inside this house. I love the, all the busts that are around the house, uh, the shotguns. I mean, there's so much here left. A uh, sad story for sure, but a very interesting one at that. So if you guys did enjoy today, I know I did. I had a great day. Leave a thumbs up if you did enjoy. Till next time, guys, peace out.